Sound vibrations travel as waves like ripples from a drop of water in a pool. The sound waves are translated by our ears into electrical signals perceived by the brain. As with vision, positive early experience with sounds is important in developing good hearing throughout the rest of life, an ability that is fundamental in the development of spoken language, of music, and our ability to safely navigate a complex and sometimes confusing world. We usually think of this flap, called the pinna, as our ear. So when we say we hear with our ears, it isn't strictly true. The outer ear directs sound into the ear canal where hearing really begins. At the end of the ear canal, the eardrum translates vibrations from the air to a series of three tiny bones suspended inside the skull. One of these bones, the stirrup, is the smallest bone in the human body. These tiny bones amplify and conduct the vibrations into a fluid-filled coiled structure called the cochlea. Inside the cochlea is a special membrane that responds differently to the different pitches in sound waves. Exquisitely sensitive hair cells embedded in this membrane translate the vibration energy into electrical signals. These signals travel through a nerve to auditory areas of the brain, ending in the temporal lobe. Hearing isn't just about being able to tell the difference between noise and silence. It's about being able to separate sounds from one another so important information can be understood. It's the brain that makes meaning from these electrical signals. This ability develops through experience with sounds during infancy and childhood. The quality of this experience matters, and positive early experience with sounds is important in developing good hearing throughout the rest of life. For example, loud, repetitive sounds have been shown to cause poor organization of auditory processing. Loud sounds a child might hear near a factory playing video games, near an airport, or busy traffic could affect their ability to tell the difference between speech sounds. For example, between the b and p sounds that would allow them to hear the difference between the words big and pig. So, it is important to remember that a child's environment has a significant impact on the development of their hearing. Problems with hearing early in life can lead to significant problems later on, so it's important to identify and address these problems as early as possible. For example, ear infections are a common problem in young children. When the area surrounding the bones in the middle ear is infected, it becomes full of fluid. The pressure pushes on the eardrum, causing pain and reduction in sensitivity to sounds. Most ear infections are easy to treat, but multiple infections over a long period of time can cause speech development delays in children due to hearing loss. Good hearing in early childhood is important for normal speech development. One of the ways we know this is through studies of children born with difficulty hearing. Depending on the reason for hearing impairment, hearing aids can be an effective treatment. However, for some children, hearing aids don't work. But if the auditory nerve inside the cochlea is functional, a special device can be surgically implanted to restore hearing. Cochlear implants receive sounds from the environment and turn them into electrical signals that the brain can understand. The age at which a child who was born deaf receives cochlear implants has an effect on how well their spoken language will develop. Most children who get an implant before the age of three and a half develop normal speech. Only about half of the children who get these implants between the ages of three and a half and seven learn to speak normally. And almost no children who receive the implant after age seven learn to speak normally, though they may experience some hearing improvements. It is important to diagnose hearing loss as early as possible to allow parents to choose the best treatment option for their child, or perhaps to learn new communication skills. 
The early detection of hearing loss is so important that in most states a special hearing test is required within a few days of birth. This simple test uses an electrode to record the electrical response of the auditory brain stem to a series of clicks delivered to the infant through headphones. Overall, we know that a child's environment can affect how their brain processes sound, so it's important to pay special attention to that environment to help children develop healthy hearing skills. Problems with hearing early in life can lead to significant problems later on, so it's important to identify and address these problems as early as possible. Here are some things to remember. First, hearing problems need to be detected as early as possible. Pediatricians should routinely give hearing tests. Concerns about a child's responsiveness to sound should be followed up by a physician who specializes in hearing disorders. Parents should also play an active role in protecting their child's hearing. It's a good idea to avoid constant, repetitive sounds whenever possible. Pharaoh, it's too loud. You have to turn it down. They can help a young child's brain make sense of sounds by playing rhyming games. Identifying interesting sounds. Guy, do you hear the birds? Yes, Mommy. And by listening to and playing music. Good job. Hearing is one of the many wonderful ways our brain allows us to experience the world. <laughs>